Heart disease is the number one killer in the United States in the general population. It turns out it's also the number one killer in patients with RA. Hi, I'm Daniel Solomon, a rheumatologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital and chief of the section of clinical sciences. And this is Clues to Cures, searching for a cure to rheumatoid arthritis, also known as RA. RA is the most common autoimmune inflammatory arthritis. It primarily affects the feet and the hands. It also affects any joint in the body. Rheumatoid arthritis affects women three times more commonly than men and affects people starting at very young ages. Children can get rheumatoid arthritis, but adults continue to get rheumatoid arthritis into their 70s and 80s. RA affects people throughout their whole lifespan. Some people without well-treated rheumatoid arthritis, in fact, have difficulty in their daily activities of living. The good news is that many treatments make rheumatoid arthritis a very treatable and controllable condition. Rheumatoid arthritis has existed for eons. There are reports of changes in the bone structure of Egyptian mummies. But then the popularization of rheumatoid arthritis and the description in the medical literature didn't happen until the 1800s. However, interestingly, in the 1600s, fine artists like Rembrandt and Rubens depicted patients or subjects with rheumatoid arthritis by showing their hands and the deformities of rheumatoid arthritis. It's so interesting how rheumatoid arthritis has been depicted in art, and actually there are artists who have suffered from rheumatoid arthritis. So Auguste Renoir, who painted in the 1800s, was crippled with rheumatoid arthritis before there were treatments. And by the end of his life, he was using a paintbrushes held in his mouth to make his paintings. So we skip ahead now to the mid 20th century and rheumatoid arthritis becomes a treatable condition. In the 1940s, Philip Hench at the Mayo Clinic developed cortisone, which was used initially by pilots flying transatlantic flights to keep them more energetic and awake. However, the same substance had a profound immunosuppressive effect and was very helpful for patients with RA. Previously, patients had been bedbound and disabled, but after cortisone, they were able to get out of bed and walk. And in fact, in 1950, Philip Hench was awarded the Nobel Prize for this discovery. Within a decade of the development of cortisone for rheumatoid arthritis, people realized there were side effects. And so over the ensuing decades, other treatments were tried. Methotrexate was developed for rheumatoid arthritis by my colleague, Michael Weinblatt at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And in the 1980s, he published the first randomized control trial showing the benefits of methotrexate for RA. The good news today for patients with RA is that we have over 15 different treatments for the condition. The vast majority of patients get better with treatment. Sometimes we use one drug, sometimes we use combinations of drugs. But the good news again is that we have very targeted therapies with minimal side effects, and most patients today with RA are leading full lives. Brigham and Women's Hospital has a long history of treating and doing research on RA. We're part of Mass General Brigham, where research is critical to everything we do in rheumatology. And this allows us to discover new treatments and to discover better ways of taking care of patients. Some examples include basic science discoveries of different types of white blood cells that are important in rheumatoid arthritis. This allows us to understand how to target treatments and how to predict which patients are gonna have different complications in RA. One particular interest of my research is heart disease in patients with RA. As we get better with treating the joints and the dysfunction and the pain of RA, we've now turned our attention to some of these potential other conditions that are associated with RA, like heart disease. Heart disease is the number one killer in the United States in the general population. It turns out it's also the number one killer in patients with RA. The good news in RA is that our treatments have become so effective that now many of my visits with patients are devoted to talking about other aspects of their RA, not just their joints. But now we have the opportunity to talk about how to best treat their lung disease, their heart disease, their skin disease. And this really is a tribute to the fact that our treatments have become so effective at improving pain and function. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Daniel Solomon. 
For more videos on arthritis, you can click here, and don't forget to subscribe here.